All right, so welcome in the in the NGHS, with which today we're gonna try and talk a little bit about the fuel consumption, which of course I think is a good topic nowadays, and I also think from experience of seeing people that many people nowadays just doesn't have the technique and uh, then in some different forums they are saying that this car has too too high fuel consumption and stuff like this but it's certainly not the case and I want to show you that even with a inefficient mid-size SUV like this or its competitors you can achieve some reasonable fuel consumption now the first thing I want to say is that the MGHS may be comparing to some top-notch competitors like the VW and stuff uh, doesn't have doesn't have all of the technologies as the competitors doesn't have the cylinder cylinder deactivation like the VW engine or it doesn't have in in the automatic transmission variant it doesn't have um, coming to the lights in the neutral mode uh, so and saving fuel this way so yeah, but anyway, let's start. We have a cold engine, completely cold engine, and cold tires are only 6 degrees Celsius. So, I would say probably the first thing that is very important with the eco driving is to be very, very smooth with the accelerator pedal. And yeah, very smooth and also thinking a lot. Thinking a lot about, about the situation ahead of you. So, and also braking as, as least as possible. So for example, here now, I don't know what this guy ahead of me is doing. Um, but yeah, trying to, trying to be very consistent and trying to drive without, without uh, unneeded braking. So yeah, that's definitely very important. And also a lot of people, they say that the automatic gearbox is particularly um, that they are, they are under revving the engine, something like this. Now, I do not think this is the case. For me, under revving the engine is that you want, uh, you want some power, you want the performance from it while having, uh, while having low RPM. So you put the accelerator uh, quite, uh, quite uh, deep down and you won't load from the engine when you're having low RPM. But when you're really, when you're really accelerating in a very sensitive way, it's not bad for the engine. So, yeah, uh, that's also another thing. So as I'm saying, trying to be as fluent as possible, braking as least as possible is definitely the case in the city. And trying to predict the situation, looking very far ahead knowing what's going on around you. So that's very important. Also keeping the distance. Another thing that the loads of people is, are doing very wrong in the city is when you're moving in a traffic jam. Wow, that's Opel Speedster, that's very cool. Wow. So when you're moving in a traffic jam, they simply, they simply move when the car ahead of them moves, but that's very wrong. One thing is that it's slowing down the traffic jam even more. And another thing is, that you still have to stop and go, stop and go, and this way you're wasting a lot of fuel as well and making the fuel consumption much higher. So really, uh, it makes sense to give the car ahead of you some maybe 10, 15 meters range in between you, and then you start moving and you, and you, you move very slowly. You, you do not want to accelerate that you're suddenly uh, up his ass. So. Uh, that's very important. Of course, also now when I'm talking, it's a little bit harder to concentrate on the eco driving, but I'll try to do my best. I just want to show you that even with a car that has a usual fuel consumption of eight point something liters, it is possible to drive to drive average on around six liters. Now I have to say, this car with the manual transmission is really, I think, a better option if you ask me, than the automatic I had a few weeks ago. Because, of course, with the manual you have, you have control over the vehicle. And the automatic wasn't behaving in the best way. It was revving the engine quite high up. It wouldn't let you 
change the gear. It didn't even have manual mode, so you can operate when you change the gear. Um, so in this regard, it wasn't the best. It wasn't the best transmission. Yes, um, and with the manual, of course, you change whenever you want. You can feel the vehicle, and also the gearing on this car. It's it's reasonably long geared. It's not short geared for performance, but more for efficiency, and that is a good thing. I was immediately able to achieve lower lower consumption in the city than I was with the automatic transmission. So now when I picked the car up, I could drive in the city for seven liters and seven liters. S uh, with the automatic car, I wasn't able to do that. I was driving for 8.5 liters in the city. So yeah, a huge difference. So now we're leaving the city and uh, coming to the motorway. Well, on the motorway, there isn't that much you can do unless you live in a terrain where there is loads of hills. Um, so then on these hills, you can actually put, put it into the neutral and, and go down the hill on neutral. As I have a few, a few hills like that on the other way, on the way here. Um, yeah, but other than that, if you want to save fuel consumption, well, as the electric guys would say, driving up to 110 kilometers is very efficient, but no, but no, not everybody wants to drive like that. And of course, when you have time, you can drive at 110 and save fuel, of course, it's very logical. But when you don't, there are still small things that I do. So I try to take the tow from the trucks and that's also lowering the fuel consumption, particularly when you're going up the hill. So when you're going up the hill, you just you just cross into the slower lane, take the tow from the truck, and that helps you accelerate much more easy. So that's maybe one thing. And then with the absolute eco run, as when you have time, yeah, uh, you can try and drive behind the truck, but it's gonna take you forever to get into your destination. But if you have time, you can drive behind the truck in the tow, and the fuel consumption will be ridiculously low, even with a car like this. Maybe the only very small detail, you, you must be a little bit of a, maybe let's say a little bit arrogant driver, but uh, try to take the corners like on a racetrack, so shortening the apexes on the motorway, shortening the corners and then shortening the distance. So then you, you make less distance and that also can help your fuel consumption. Yes, I do sometimes, yes. Um, so, yeah, and I'll talk to you again on some B-roads because that's where you can really do a lot of good for the car. Okay, guys, so we've just come down from the motorway where I pushed, uh, I, I went a little bit fast, 140, 150, I even got fined, unluckily. Um, but so yeah, <laughs> okay. But uh, the consumption now is maybe not the most efficient, and thanks to that, because I wanted to fast forward to this bit. So it's now 8.5. But let's see how we can put this down. So let's continue the video. One thing I wanted to say uh, also is if you have a short geared car, short gear ratios. Don't be worried about crossing gear, so you can go from one to three, from three to five. If you rev the engine a little bit high up, and then you put it into a higher gear, if you have a low geared car, because it doesn't really make sense to go through all of the gears if there is a fall of RPM, about 500 RPM. So, yeah. Um, So that, that's it, and now on the B-roads, of course, what helps the car is that, is that you're going significantly slower than on the motorway, so you're doing 90, 100, 110, which is ideal uh, for the efficiency. And uh, here on the B-roads, if you have a surface that has a lot of hills and stuff, you can use a lot of driving, a lot of gliding in the neutral. And that, of course, makes the average consumption much higher. Or, if the hill is steep enough, you can leave the car in the gear, and when it's in the gear, the engine doesn't consume any fuel. Um, 
so that's even a more efficient way than putting in than, than putting it into neutral but if you have a hill that is followed by climbing up uh, then it is a good idea to just leave it in the neutral get a little bit more speed that then helps you going up the hill so here for example if you can see now we're going down the hill so I'm now putting it into neutral because then it's going to be a way up the hill so just like this of course you may you might depending on the on the angle of the hill you might lose a little bit of speed or not but still it helps you so now we're going down to the absolute bottom of the of of the valley and now I can put it into sixth gear and uh, yeah now it's going to be the uphill section so I didn't get the speed as much as I could so I'm not gonna accelerate I'm gonna just keep my foot in one position on the throttle and go like this so 90 kilometers going up the hill is, is very okay we're within six gear uh, 2000 rpm you do not want to to put your foot uh, more flat with the accelerator because then of course the consumption uh, will go up so just very steady wait for it and now when you're again on top of the hill which is followed again by the decline section which is this is not very big decline but you can again put it into neutral and just glide towards the village that is upcoming that of course is going to help again with the fuel consumption so this is the sort of technique and it makes sense of course with the petrol cars all but also it makes sense with the electric cars and you actually if you want to get the best out of electric car in terms of range you really need to know how to drive efficiently because if you don't know then you're going to be really disappointed with the range of the car really so it's good to to learn and although it might seem quite boring but it's actually the absolute opposite it's trying to to be the most detailed about how to be the most efficient as it is to being the the most perfect trying to get the lines on the circuit and cut the corner in exactly the correct way so it has it has its magic in it so now we're going into the village so you can slow down by the engine I do not want to get another fine I hope there is no police so you can slow down by the engine just putting it into lower gear and that that slows the engine down now the car uh, came on the road ahead of me so I can put it even in the lower gear to slow down without without touching the brake pedal so yeah Uh, so and already after these few kilometers the consumption went that went uh, down to 8.4 from 8.6 so that's a that's a good sign okay so this was very unexpected you see I didn't keep the correct distance that I was talking to you and now I had to brake with the brake pedal so now 2000 rpm absolutely no problem to shift at, at this sort of rpm with going ecologically that should be depending when you're on a flat surface like this it should be that the top of the rpm where you should change the gear really um, so yeah now many people might be worried that when you drive economically most of the time you're gonna you're gonna make it tough for the engine you're gonna make it bad for the engine from long term but really a good driver knows that he can drive economically and then on some good bits of road he drives fast and gives the engine a little bit of a Italian tune-up you know a little bit of Italian cleaning of the valve so me personally I don't see it as a negative thing to drive ecologically now again a little bit down the hill so let's use this and yes nice and as you're driving ecologically many times you find out you can look at the country how beautiful it is and just enjoy enjoy the music enjoy the talk well not really the talking because when you're talking the concentration is otherwise going away into other things 
then you should be concent concentrating on the road and being the most efficient as you can be. So. Yeah, but that would be about it. I'll let you know with the fuel consumption in the in the finish line when I'm at home. And just to, just to sum it up, you need to be very consistent with the speed, uh, not braking too much with the brake pedal. Uh, you need to be very smooth with the accelerator. If you have a low geared car, definitely don't be afraid to jump the gears so you can go from one to three from three to five or from four to six just rev the engine a little bit higher up when you're going use every opportunity of going down the hill to either get the speed by putting the car into neutral or to glide or or to glide either in neutral or in the gear which is even the most efficient way as the car has zero consumption at that time so that is another thing and of course in the city there is still a lot you can do particularly in the traffic jam just let the car go away a little bit and then uh, start going so these are the these are the main aspects of, of going ecologically and uh, yeah then it's just about training yourself um, and trying to predict the situation on the roads ahead of you so that you don't need to brake you don't need to accelerate very hard it has its magic so good luck to you with training it and uh, I'll see you in the finish line anyway. Okay guys, so I'm home and look at the consumption. I've managed to put it down by one liter to seven and a half. So great, isn't it?